So welcome to Moss Voices. Thank you. Um, today we're here with John Prescott. So we have three short questions. Um, the first one is, so motorways of the sea is the maritime dimension of the trans-European transport network. How do you think motorways of the sea can be better linked into the trans-European transport network? Well, my main contribution today to the debate is to point out that I was also the negotiator for climate change, going back in 1997 as the European negotiator at Kyoto, right through to Paris. And the most fundamental change now beginning to take place is when we determine transport flows, whether the maritime or land or rail, we tend to think the most efficient and effective and integrated way. Now, of course, because we are now set to what they're discussing today, that Europe now sets itself to reduce carbon. Now, that means got to be a carbon footprint on all the transport flows we've got. How does it help reduce the commitment we've made to reduce carbon and the consequences of that? And transport is one of the very special areas for us to address our minds too, if we really want to achieve the reduction in carbon and the change in the weather patterns. Thank you. And, and what is the perception of motorways of the sea in your country, so in the UK? Um, I don't think they know much about it. And in fact, most of the officials tend to think that any traffic for Europe, which is our biggest partner in, in trade and development, has to go down south to Dover. And if you look at where they do, they pick what the industry decided. So goods must come from Scotland right down to the most congested area in Britain. Transport is not only about carbon, it's how you reduce the congestion. So really in Britain, we've pretended to leave the market to decide it. But now the consequences in congestion and pollution are becoming so great, we have to rethink the flows. And that's beginning to happen in Britain. And today we've been talking a lot about the detailed implementation plan for motorways of the sea. In your view, what should it really focus on? That is the most important change, because what you're beginning to do to transport now is to say to them, in this plan that we give to the UN and we put in our laws, must take account of the environmental consequence of the route routes. Now, that is very important. You've got to get that right, how you decide, what distribution, what is the most effective, not only for good transportation systems, but also gives us the best environmental tar uh, target uh, policy. And that is quite revolutionary. Now, instead of saying, what is the cost, what are the profits, the market system, no one actually saying now that we used to say years ago, we'll build an underground, it can't pay for its way on the fares, so what we'll do, we'll introduce social costs. That means another aspect of social cost, will, uh, another aspect of social cost, which is an environmental cost, now must be fed in for the planning of transport. I welcome that. Perhaps a little less, more, less layer of state aid considerations to more partnership considerations that we've heard today. When you're looking about what fuel should ships use to meet these things, you need to have state involvement in the sense of sharing the cost with the private sector. That's what is going to happen more and more. And I hope for less consideration on the narrow criteria. Is it state financing when you're building a different transport system? Okay. Thank you very much. Okay.